Hey there, boys and girls. This was a tough video to produce. Um, it really is not a great video, but then again, it's, it, it proves that you you know you can do it. You can get things done, perseverance and all that stuff. But if for me to shoot the video and be able to show you step by step, it's almost impossible because you're working inside the snowblower. Your hands are inside the chassis. You couldn't get a camera shot in there. There's no way. I mean, my whole hands barely fit in that thing. And you're 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 manipulating all these little parts, spacers and stuff with your fingers. It's like, uh, and you can't see a thing. You're not working with your eyes. You're working with sense of touch. Uh, it's like being under working under the bed sheets. Sense of touch and dexterity. That's it. Uh, okay. So without any more uh, hoobala, well, here goes the video. See you soon. All right, boys and girls. I was doing another video today, but I have to jump in and do a video on this one here. It looks like the uh, Briggs and Stratton Brute uh, 145029, I think this is. It, uh, you know, the uh, drive wheel is not driving anymore. I'll tell you, there's a little backstory to this. I was in the wood pile with this thing, and what I normally do is uh, I keep my rows for my firewood, and I'm able to uh, get down the rows. And then what happened was I sucked up a tarp into this thing. And I mean, I sucked it up good. So I broke both shear pins, which I don't have any in stock. Uh, but I did have a brand new wheel in stock for the friction wheel. I'm going to put that in. And uh, that's what we're up to today. Um, I got a couple of different ideas. I'm thinking about unbolting the... Uh, I'll show you. Hold on. I'm thinking about unbolting... The shift, the friction wheel, let me get some light on the story here. Um, you can see the friction wheel, the black wheel there, right? Let's get this situated. So right here is the friction wheel, and it's held on by three quarter inch bolts. Um, so what I was thinking, and you got to pull this, let me see if I can get a better angle. That shaft right there, the hex shaft, it rides along there to change the gear ratio. That hex shaft has to be pulled in order to get the wheel off. Um, the speed adjuster, the speed adjuster is this guy right here. Let me see, right here. And that's, uh, it's got a bearing in it. It's got a couple of thrust washers on it. And it brings the wheel along onto the drive disc. Uh, my drive disc is in beautiful shape. I believe this is the original wheel that's wore out. So we're going to change the wheel. So what I have to uh, do is... Uh, I don't know, let me think. The, the shaft, because it's actually a jack shaft. If you can see over in this corner here, the drive wheel runs a chain. Right, that little primary sprocket through this big secondary sprocket over to this primary sprocket through this sprocket that drives the axles. So there's your gear ratio, your reduction. So what I have to do is there's a bearing on either end. There's a bearing back there and there's a bearing, let me see my finger. There's so much junk in here you can't tell. There's a bearing on the other end of that shaft. There, you can just see it. Just see it over on the left-hand side. I can't hold the light and point at the same time. So I'm going to undo those bearings, and then I'm going to try and pull the wheel off. I don't know. I'm just going to dive into it, and I'll get back into the video, and I'll show you. But just so you guys know... <clears throat> We are putting in a genuine Briggs and Stratton friction wheel. We're strolling. Uh, there's the part number there. 150135MA. That's a friction wheel. It's made in Canada. It's a uh, Briggs and Stratton part. And uh, yeah, we're going to put that in there. There it is there. I wanna, once I get the other one out, we'll look at it. And then I'll show you the difference between the two. So without carrying on too much further, let me get into unbolting that shaft. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys really want to see that, whatever. 
I haven't got the tripod side up. It's cold in here. I got a lot of stuff that got to get done. So I'm just going to unbolt the shaft and then I'll show you guys. So stand by. Okay, I got the shaft bolt unbolted. And you can see this is flopping around. Yeah. Okay, it's just a matter of wiggling that out. Of the fork, and we're out of the sprocket. The bearing fell out, which is okay, I guess. And this bearing's trapped in here. Whoa, Chinese puzzle time! Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Sorry about that, guys. I got her kind of stuck here for a second. <laughs> it's the bearing right here. Got buggers right. Jamming stuff up. The other one fell off. I hope I don't have to pull the axle out. Okay, I got the bearing off. You can't see it, but I'm fingering it. And it's off. See where we are here? Right here? The shaft has to come out. It's got to wiggle out. Okay. I got that far. And I got out of there. Okay. There's a thrust washer there. That's right there. I put it right here. Remember where I put that. To assume there may be one on the other end. Oh, interesting. So if I pull the shaft out, I should be able to walk walk the drive wheel out. Okay, so right here is a, is a uh, there's a ring on here. I have to pull that ring off, and then I should be able to slide the shaft out. Right once we get this ring here off. And then once I slide the shaft out, I should be able to slide out the friction wheel. Okay, stand by. All right, got the shaft out. There it is there. It's got the sprocket on the end. I had to take that little snap ring off. A pair of needle nose pliers got that off. Work it around inside. Get the shaft out. Now the wheel is laying there. Um, right here. So hopefully that'll fish out now. Look at, look at that right out through there. So there's the wheel. And the two washers that are that were on the yoke. There's one laying down there. I don't know if you can see it underneath that big sprocket. And that one's laying somewhere over here. I saw them both. I'll fish them out. So there's that assembly right there. Let me clean it up, and we'll get that off. And we'll take a look at it. But we did manage to get it. It's not too bad so far. It's uh, it's going okay. Um, like I said, my drive wheels or my the the platen. We'll call this the platen disc, friction disc platen. This is in really good shape, so I don't have to worry about that. That's an expensive part. Um, yeah. So let me get this. There's a bearing there. You can see what the bearing looks like. It's actually just a bushing. There's one on each side. So there's that's it right there. Um, yeah, so so far the other one's laying there. It fell down in there. I don't know if you can see it. I won't fall. There it is right there. So we'll just leave that there for now because we gotta work it back onto the shaft after we get the wheel on. So let's get let's go ahead and get the wheel on. So we're putting this new wheel on and see how that goes. So I'm looking at these two doubles and uh putting the old one to the new one. Yeah, there's not a huge difference, but there is a you know a difference, maybe 40, 50 thou, but uh it's the texture. If you can see into this, there's like the uh it's just this is just you know what I mean? It's it's slick. It's slicker than snot. Like I mean, there's no way that that's gonna grip. I mean, this is greasy feeling. I don't know if it's different core rubber inside there. You can see there's uh Looks like Kevlar fiber or something down in there. 
and uh yeah that stuff doesn't want to grip and on the new one is that the same mark looks like it on the new one yeah there's more uh, more rubber let me get this bolted on there's the uh the yoke with the bearing in it sorry um, i had to use an air ratchet to uh zip those off because you can't you can't get nothing inside the wheel and then there's those lock nuts there with the star washers on them so let me throw this back together again and uh I just wanted to show you, and we'll get it back together. I just wanted to show you guys the difference between these wheels, the old one and the new one. All right, so there they are there. And I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know if I'm focusing that well. And if you don't like it, well, too bad. I'm old, and I can't see that good. There you go. Talk, you know, stand by, and we'll uh, we'll get this back together. Okay, side note here. Um, there's no great way to lubricate this. So I'm going to inject it with some LPS Red and Ready multi-purpose uh, grease. And I'm going to try to shoot it inside this little gap right in here. Just oil it up. I'll let you know how that goes. Again, I don't have a tripod and I can't do this stuff one-handed. So I'm just going to inject it in there and then we'll see how it goes. Oh, okay. Here's the trick. You have to put the top in first. With the, flat, with the thrust washer and then roll the bottom in, holding the thrust washer, getting it in the, between the fingers here of the yoke. Now, I would have liked to video that for you, but it would be impossible because you wouldn't see nothing because my hands have to be inside this whole box. I got the shaft in, put the sprocket bearing in first, slide it in through the chain. This one was dangling low here, slide the bearing on, walk it over into the center position where it almost it's sitting almost where it lives i contemplated unbolting the wheel but then i thought you know what if they were doing this on assembly line they weren't going to monkey around like that so you got sometimes you got to think how the thing's built to get to where you need to be so as you can see both thrust washers i don't know if you can see that yeah you can see it right there that thrust washer's in that thrust washer's in thrust washer on the sprocket side of the shaft on the uh, oil light bearing thrust washer on the sprocket to the shaft on that oil light bearing by the way those bearings that are in them little tin housings they're oil light bronze you can lube them if you want it doesn't hurt uh does it help debatable so i'm going to squirt some red and ready in there uh because that's what i have and uh we'll keep moving on so um let me get this shaft bolted back in Oh, by the way, undo the shifter rod. That's what I had to do to manipulate the fork. It's attached to this rod. I undid the rod so I can get lots of swing out of it. It's way easier coming apart. And I don't know if that's because the wheels wore down or just everything's so flipping greasy. It just popped apart. So, I mean, sometimes that's that's a good thing and sometimes that's not a good thing. So, that's uh, that's where I am now. I'm going to bolt the shaft back in. The two bearings get bolted in through the outside of the sheet metal here. Um, I don't know if you can see. I took them out earlier. Uh, you can see where it lives. Right there and right there. And same on both sides. Um, I noticed that some of the machines, and I don't know if it's Arians or not, but they actually have a, a hole drilled through, and you just slide that whole hex shaft out. That would be phenomenal, but this machine's not built like that. This is a, uh, I believe Murray made these. And when it's part of the Briggs and Stratton Corporation. Um, so they didn't choose to do it that way. I dropped one of the thrust washers in underneath. Then the pressure, then the, see the platen moves back and forth right here. This guy, let me see, sorry. This guy right here moves back and forth. And I dropped the, one of the, the, washers in here i mean i've been at this for 40 minutes so you got to have patience and you got to be able to manipulate three things at once so like i said the whole trick was to roll roll the uh i don't know if you call that that bearing that's that's in that yoke no it's not the yoke the bearing that's in i don't know what do you want to what do we want to call this there's probably a name for it but you got to roll the to keep the thrust washers there, you can see the thrust washer center of the screen. 
you can see it's sitting there. You got to keep the, your fingers on the one below. The one on top just sits there, and you actually roll that, that yoke um, into the fork. Okay, let's call it that. We'll call it the, 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 the transmission selector yoke into the fork. Um, at the same time, the bearings on each end, they kind of sit there on their own. When they're at a, a small angle like that, they don't go anywhere. So that's okay. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let me get this bolted in. I'll get back to you. All right. Got it all back in again. That's where it looks. That's where it lives. That's normal. I haven't hooked the shifter rod up yet. But what I did notice right away is one big problem. Is this is rubbing. It's rubbing on the on the on uh, that drive plate. And you can see it's sweeping the grease out of the way. Don't worry about the grease. We'll clean it all off later. I know everybody's getting all antsy. You got grease on it. It's uh, It'll be good. We'll get that off. So what I noticed was that an adjustment was made to this unit. If we look here, we can see the witness mark where the cable was originally. So that means this cable was tensioned. Sorry, let me start again. That This is where the cable was tensioned. You can see the cage, the cable probably lived right here because there's some wear marks right there, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's too tight. Like it's 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 freaking tight. And it wants to pull up. You can see. See that? It, it always wants to pull. And if I push down on here, that takes that plate away. So right now the plate's rubbing the wheel and I'm afraid of it flat spot. And I'm going to try backing it off one. Uh, this is a crazy adjustment. Look at this janky stuff. But I don't know. That's what they did. I'm going to try backing it off by one. So I'll go up to this hole here. See what happens. Because uh, it's not banjo string tight. But she is a bit tight. Um, some of them, the adjustments here. Yeah, that's just too tight. Some of them this this adjusts depends on the machine, but not this one. Let me let me uh, see if I can undo this. Okay, I think that was it. Um, it's no like it's no longer touching. It's free to turn. So I think that's uh, that was the ticket. I'll get all this degreased. Um, I, I lengthened the cable. I put it there. I put it there, right there. I'm going to say all that, all that mess right there is from, uh, the original factory setting. That's a terrible setup, but anyway, it is what it is. So that's what I did. It's still not loose. And it looks like when I stroke it, I, I can't stroke it. Well, maybe I can Yeah, it looks like it's going to work. We're going to give it a shot anyway. That's where I think it is. All that's back together again. I'm going to button the cover up, and then we'll give it a shot. Whew, the adjustment was the key, though. So it was adjusted. Um, it was adjusted for an old friction disc. And once that friction disc was slipping, it was adjusted. Um... And then uh, we put the new disc in, and it's too much. So you have to unadjust it, if you know what I mean. You have to back the cable off because the new wheel has bigger diameter. Whew. Okay, let's keep going. All right. There you go. All clean. Ready to go. Wheel's clean. Degreased. Everything's degreased. Everything that needs to be greased is greased. Uh, I even did the oil light just, just for, for the heck of it. And all that's done. It's all back together again. You can see where it's all looking like it's supposed to. All I have to do is connect the, the gear selector rod back up, put the cover on, and we can test it. So I just wanted you guys to make sure you know I degreased it in the wheels. And yeah, the world's not going to stop rotating because I got a little bit of grease on the uh, friction or in the drive platen. Anyway, they're button they're back up. Okay, you see we got it driving again. I can't do any snow blowing and test it because the auger shear pins are broke. 
and I gotta go get some. Uh, I got a bunch ordered on Amazon. They're coming in. Um, so I'll finish this thing up tomorrow. We'll do a test on it. Uh, you don't need to see the video, I guess. I'm just gonna produce this video, put it up today. Uh, there you go. So there it is. You can do it. It's not a, it's not a hard job to do. So sorry you couldn't see guys see a lot. I'll preface the video and I'll do a little bit of explaining and we'll go from there. Yeah, and don't forget, eh, guys? Hit the subscribe button. Um, that's how we live on YouTube. I mean, we're putting his content out for you these, for these guys. And uh, it takes a little bit of time. takes a little bit of effort. I mean, that's okay. Um, but the, the only thing that at any of the, any of the you'll, you'll see any of the content producers ask you, is just subscribe. And if you don't hit the notification bell, you won't get any dings or dongs or it won't mess up your phone. You'll get the odd email or something. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem to be very consistent, but you'll, but you're helping us out. You're helping us out, show you guys how to do stuff. So it's really important. I'm going to close the video now and, uh, uh, I'll do, I got to finish up the video on the Aryans tomorrow. I have two MTDs that I have to do. Uh, this is the brute. It's done. So there's more to come. Take care. See you soon. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. God bless. Uh, for my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. See you soon. Bye-bye.